The Realm Tree. Episode 25, Lightning Strikes. Well, I'm glad I decided to take the initiative to find you all myself. Even the sophisticated must get their hands dirty when it comes down to it. I truly can't believe we spent an entire two months unsure of where you all escaped to. Oh, Catherine, dear, what was the name of the soldier in charge of searching this residence? That was Lieutenant Ixion, ma'am. He was advised to search the Demeter residence with prejudice, but it seems he still fell short. I can move for his termination. Termination? No, no. That's a waste. I'll ask Kent to put him on the front lines. Spring Representative Lily Green Lancaster carried herself with a poise and sharpness, never dropping her smile. Even as she drew a thin, needle-like sword from her hip and held it gracefully towards me, Lex, Nicholas, Daisy, and Gardenia. Her ornate butterfly wings fluttered gently. Meanwhile, Catherine Zephyr extended a blade of swirling wind from her index and middle finger. Hello, Gardenia. Long time no- with barely a twitch of Gardenia's finger, a spiked vine rose from the ground off to Catherine's right and fired thorns at her. She reacted quickly, swiping the attack away as she stepped back. She stood between us and Representative Lancaster. I am not wasting any time playing games. Catherine, you know what these people are doing. I don't care how strong you are, you're outnumbered two to five. We have reinforcements coming. Within the hour, the Demeter household will be reduced to rubble. If you mess with my folks, then I'm gonna kick your ass so bad your whole family's gonna feel it! Personally, I think this is just a dash of extra motivation for us to take you out quickly. You've made enemies with the wrong fairies. You kids think you can stand up to a member of the Council of Six? We didn't receive these titles for just looking pretty. Nicholas and I locked eyes, and I could tell we were thinking the same thing. The moment we had the opportunity, someone needed to get to the demeanor house and tell the others. Oh, little Christelles, pay attention when other fairies are speaking. If you're thinking of setting off a flare for help, you're just gonna help our soldiers find you faster. She slid a finger along the edge of her weapon. I just barely noticed the texture of a drop of clear liquid on its tip. From what I've been told, you're all good at keeping your distance. But, what of the others? I think you're just afraid of our allies getting here before yours do. And we have some very quick fairies on our side. Your defeat will be simple mathematics. Clever. Brains truly do run in the family. However, let's up the stakes a little bit, shall we? Representative Lancaster went to fix her hair. I saw something glint on her finger. My brother's fists clenched. You... How do you have that? It can't be. With a wide grin, Lancaster exploded into mist, coating the spring forest in a thick haze. Ah! I can't see! Well, let's get a little light then, shall we? Lex twirled his hands and a dozen flaming birds were summoned around us. Not total illumination in this fog, but their fire could keep the pointy end of her sword away from us. Good thinking, Lex. They're not attacking yet. Keep your guard up. Hey, Nadine. Nicholas. You all right? Huh? Uh, yeah. I think there might be some type of poison on her sword. If this mist is her jewel power, then the liquid on her weapon is something else. Nadine. Yes? She had our mom's ring. What? The blue ring. With the little holes in it. Nadine? Nicholas? Uh, do we all hear this voice? It's calling to you guys. Yes. There it is. There what is? Our mother had an ancient artifact when she was part of the council. It's called Hecate's Cacophony. It could recreate sounds and voices it magically records. She always wore it. But after she died, we never found it again. Nadine? Do you think- Nadine! Nicholas! Uh, that's so creepy! I'm feeling shivers in my spine. It can't be. Can it? Look out! A distant razor wind from Catherine Zephyr sliced through two of Lex's birds. A silver blade flashed in the opening between them before clanging against a vine summoned by Gardenia. Lily Green Lancaster disappeared again into the mist. Nadine, we need to get that ring back. First priority is the spring fragment and our lives. We can't let the ring get in the way of our decision making. Nadine! Nicholas! The voice of our dead mother called to us again. My whole body tensed and I tried to shake it off. <sighs> Okay, first we get out of this mist. Fast. Lex, keep your wisps up, and remember Catherine is here too. 
Everyone fly! As one unit, we rocketed up out of the mist on our wings. Right when we could see the clear blue sky again, Catherine came flying towards us, spinning at us with a kick. I held my arms up instinctively, only for Daisy to glow with her power aura and grab Catherine by the leg mid-attack. No! No sneak attacks! Daisy spun in the air to hammer throw Catherine back down to the ground into the mist. We heard a thud where she must have crashed. Let me and Gardenia handle Catherine. We can keep her grounded. You three find Lily Green and keep her at a distance. Right. Sounds like a plan. Good luck to both of you. Daisy and Gardenia flew right for the sound of Catherine hitting the forest floor. They vanished from sight as well. Now, Lex, you need to get to the Demeter House as quickly as possible and get help. What? Is the plan thrown out already? The light from his wisp help us see through the fog. You want us to play keep away with someone we can barely see? Lex can travel the fastest and has the best shot at beating the soldiers to the Demeanor House. Don't worry, I have a plan. <sighs> I'm not so sure. Trust me. Please. <sighs> Alright. Please don't die. I won't. Now get going already. Lex nodded. He turned one of his flaming words into a golden deer of fire, like the ones we rode through the realm tree. He fluttered to mount it, then the rest of his fiery words went to surround me and Nicholas. Keep them safe now! Yeah! Atop his flying deer, Lex rode towards the demeanor house faster than most fairies could fly. A trail of flames flickered in the air behind him as he charged away across the sky. In the distance, we could hear grunts as Daisy and Gardenia battled Catherine. Lex's birds of fire circled around us protectively. So, what was that plan you had? Blast the mist and eventually we'll hit her. Straightforward. I like it. Using five permafrost cubes as points of connection, I created my energy bow which sparked blue and white. I notched a glowing red arrow from a fire cube. Nicholas crossed his arms over his chest. Belts of ice bullets materialized and wrapped around his forearms. He pointed all of his fingers down at the mist, the bullets mechanically sliding to his knuckles. Now? Now. Nicholas sprayed his bullets in a splash across the misty forest below. My attacks were slower, but my fire arrows ignited the occasional bush and patch of grass, the light helping us see through the mist. Now it was easy to avoid where Daisy and Gardenia were fighting against Catherine but no sign of Lily Green. If her mist form is incorporeal, then we might not be able to hit her. That's fine. We just keep her on the defensive until Daisy and Gardenia can take out Catherine. Then it's four to one until everyone else gets here. Catherine's at Mercury's level in combat last I checked. Will it really be that easy? It's our best shot right now. Fair. Damn, I'm running out of energy for these bullets. Take some of my cubes. Save them for when you see her. Got it. I tossed three cubes over to Nicholas. In the moment of quiet, the mist started to change shape. It receded into one spot beneath our feet. What's it doing? <gasps> Look out! The mist rushed upwards at us as a pillar of fog. On the ground below, I briefly saw Daisy, Gardenia, and Catherine look up from their brawl before the mist engulfed Nick and I. Concentrated just at us, the fog was thick and dense. Lex's birds could barely provide any sight through it. I took out an extinguisher cube and doused Lex's wisps. I grabbed Nicholas by the hand and pulled him quietly through the fog, hoping he understood the meaning. With the light from the birds gone, maybe she wouldn't be able to find us. We just had to keep quiet until we could get out. Nadine. Little Nick. I love you. Don't you dare! Nicholas, no! I turned to look at my brother, and I saw Lily Green Lancaster appear on her butterfly wings, manifesting from the mist behind him. Her white teeth shone through the mist in a grin. <laughs> As he turned around, she slashed across my brother's stomach with her poisoned blade. Ah! Nick! The mist was gone, and so was Lily Green Lancaster. I wiped the sweat off my forehead as Catherine stared down at me and Daisy. Representative Lancaster has gone on the offensive. Lex Goldenray has fled. Your friends are not long for this world. Let's see if I can finish you off on my own. Catherine, I spent so much time trying to convince everyone you have a heart under all those fancy soldier buttons. Do me a favor and prove me right. I respect you, Gardenia, but the military's goals take precedence over our time as teammates. All right. 
Then I'll use my thorns to shut your power off and leave you tied to a tree somewhere. How's that sound? Catherine silently turned around and partially undid the zipper on her upper back. She had a second jewel stitched beneath the nape of her neck. Be warned. This is my new strength. I now have enough jewel energy that it'll take a lot more than a thorn or two to disable my powers. I won't give you any pity. You had your chance to join us. I can't believe you. You accepted the jewel of a dead fairy into your body. You're a real jerk, Catherine! It's too bad after all that they couldn't graft a personality onto you, too. That's funny. (laughs) I'll make it the last joke you ever tell. With a blade of wind on each hand, Catherine flew at us. I created a bramble wall which she dodged around by changing her flight path with a puff of wind from her mouth. Back me up, power pulse! With Daisy's aura flowing into me, I grabbed Catherine by the wrist as she moved in to slash at us. The razor air whirling around her arms started to cut my hands as I held her back. Daisy's green energy surrounding me made me strong enough to hold her back and slowly heal some of the slashes, but they couldn't stop all the bleeding. Too soft to counterattack, or too weak? Catherine kicked off my stomach, flipping midair while I stumbled. She tucked her legs into her chest before kicking a short-range blast of wind at me with both feet, propelling herself away. It hit me square in the right arm, causing it to bend out of place and crack. Get back here! Gardenia, that sounded like a break. Let me take the lead. No. She outranges your punches and she's faster than you. Keep giving your pulse to me and I'll keep her at a distance. Raising my one uninjured arm, I created an obstacle course of twisting brown vines, roots, thorns between us and Catherine. Daisy's supportive aura made my vines larger and stronger, even with just one hand controlling them. They all glowed green and started swinging at Catherine like appendages from the ground. With bursts of speed, she dodged around them. As she kicked off the ground to fly at me, I erected a bramble wall in front of us. She landed on the other side and stared us down through the gaps between the roots and vines. You're just delaying the inevitable. Stop wasting my time. Maybe I'm just waiting until you're in the right spot. Bramble burst. I snapped my fingers. Before Catherine could react, dozens of brambles behind her exploded into a burst of thorns. They found their marks in the back of her neck, shoulders, and forearms. Was that enough thorns for you, little Miss Two Jewels? The swirling blades of wind around Catherine's hands began to dissipate, the anti-magic effects of my powers taking hold. Before I could drop the bramble wall, she flew off. I quickly wrapped my scarf around my broken arm as a sling. I'll try to catch her. You go help the others. We can fix up my arm when I'm back. Got it! I flew after Catherine as Daisy bolted for the pillar of mist in the distance. Nick? Nicholas! Come on, wake up! I shook my brother on the ground, his glasses bent out of shape. I had managed to slow his fall by diving to grab his arm, but couldn't stop us from crashing into the forest floor. Lying against a log with a red slash across his stomach, He was still breathing, but he was going into a cold sweat. First, I placed a wind cube in my sleeve in case Lily Green tried to sneak up on us. Then I took a cube of ointment from my pouch and rubbed it in as quickly as possible. Come on, Nick, work with me here. This anti-venom is just made for snake bites. It'll only be enough if your body fights it. Mm, Nadine? (sighs) You're up. I'm so- Look out! I spun around to see Lily Green and pointed the wind cube at her. Release! The blast of wind hit her in the stomach, knocking her back before she could slice me, too. Mm, You little... You saw me coming, didn't you? Not saw, guessed. You're sneaky, but you're predictable. I stood up slowly, holding my bow ready and standing over Nicholas. Now tell me, why do you have my mother's ring? I thought it would compliment my eyes. Answer me! I launched a fire arrow at her legs, and she dodged by turning into mist. Before dissipating into energy, the arrow hit a patch of grass which caught fire. I threw a gas cube over to it. Release! The explosion rocked the area. Even Lily Green in her mist form was blown to the side and skidded on the ground as she reappeared, slowing herself with a decisive flap of her wings. I ran towards her and notched another arrow, this one made from lightning. I took aim. Nadine. What? Lex? I spun around and only saw my brother on the ground behind me. (laughs) Fooled you. 
I felt a kick to my back as Lily Green knocked me to the floor. I rolled over and she quickly pointed her blade to my throat, stopping me from grabbing my pouch or bow. She put a heel on my stomach and showed off my mom's ring proudly. You're a smart girl, Nadine. I'm a little disappointed you're only just putting the pieces together. Yes, I killed your mother. Appeared in your humble home and got it done. I use the same poison that I keep on this blade, the same poison I used on your brother. Nothing personal. She was just a little too righteous and a little too close to finding us out. Lily Green stepped harder on me, but her eyes remained locked on mine. Around her neck, I could see the green fragment of the spring crystal in a necklace that matched Professor Doherty's. It's a fun toy, isn't it? I have a little observation, by the way. Your brother was most agitated here in his mother's voice. And your little heart jumped in your chest when you heard the Golden Ray Child. I suppose that makes him a mama's boy. And you, a lovesick little teenager. Nadine! Hang on! Huh. Your little spring friend is coming this way. I'll make this quick. She drew her sword back to stab my neck. Hey! Her eyes went to my brother on the ground. He was sitting up against the log, breathing heavily with his arm outstretched, fumbling with something. In Lily Green's moment of distraction, I dodged around her sword to yank the necklace off her neck. Ah! Oh, you impudent little- Nicholas had loaded the lightning cube I gave him into the ice launcher on his finger. He pointed at Lily Green. Nobody messes with my sister! From my brother's hand, a bullet of lightning struck Lily Green in an instant. <laughs> Electricity surged through her body. I kicked the poison sword away from her. Then four regular ice bullets from my brother shot through her leg and arm, causing her to stumble back. I tossed the spring crystal over to Daisy who ran up next to me. She brandished her aura. With a terrified look in her eyes, Lily Green Lancaster dissolved into mist, then quickly flew back through the forest. And we were alone. <sighs> One fragment down. Hey, is your brother okay? We both flew over to Nicholas. He was breathing steadily. Daisy, he's been poisoned. I applied an anti-venom, but it might not have been enough. <laughs> Don't worry. With a shaky hand, Nicholas pointed at several oddly shaped globules of ice on the ground next to him. I make my ice bullets with water from the air and from my own body. So I made as many as possible from the slash across my stomach to force most of the poison out along with the water. <sighs> How very Christelle of you. Yeah. Shows them not to underestimate us. So you don't need healing? Oh, no, I'll take whatever you can spare, please. I can't stand up right now. On it. <sighs> Nadine. Yeah? Did you get Mom's ring back? No, but I'm sure we will. All right. Together. As Daisy began infusing my brother with energy, I saw Gardenia fly down towards us with her arm in a makeshift sling. Sorry, y'all. I couldn't catch up with Catherine, but I pumped her with enough anti-magic thorns that she should be leaving us alone for a bit. That's more than all right. Injuries aside, we came away from this with a crystal fragment. I'll get to healing your arm in a sec, Gardenia. Hey! We all turned to see Professor Doherty, Mercury, Rondell, Linden, Hazel, Cedar, Ingrid, Florence, with Lex, up front riding on a flaming deer. I felt my breath catch when I saw him. Uh, hey there! Nicholas! Hazel broke into a run to help her teammate up, splitting into two to support him as he stood. I'm fine, don't worry. I'm tougher than I look. Everyone, this is not what I expected coming out here. I need you all to tell me what in the name of fairy kind happened here. We were attacked by Catherine and Representative Lancaster on the way back to the house. But it worked out pretty well. Ta-da! Daisy proudly held out the necklace with a green jewel, which matched the icy one around Professor Doherty's collar. I can't believe it. Is that the spring fragment? I think so. But shouldn't you be the one to know that? Yes, pardon me. Perhaps it's more accurate to just say I'm flabbergasted. And impressed. Well, this is a good thing, isn't it? We have that one, yours, and now there's only four more until we can drop all the barriers. Not the time to celebrate just yet. They alerted the military to our location. We should expect the Demeter House to be swarming with soldiers soon. So what do we do? 
Fight them off? That's what I was gonna say! If we make a stand here, they'll cleave through our numbers before we even get close to the other council members. As the only ones working to drop the barriers, we all need to stay alive. And once we drop enough of them, we go on the offensive. I looked over to my brother. We both nodded. We, we should, should start, start the plan, plan now. now. So soon? I thought we were waiting until the equinox when wingless fairies could cross between realms, uh, to take advantage of the confusion at that time of the year. We have two fragments. The spring and winter realms aren't adjacent, so dropping those barriers won't do anything. If we want this victory to have any value, we need to get the fragments to the adjacent realms as soon as we can, before they can bolster their forces. They won't surrender until their world completely crumbles. Lily Green Lancaster lost her weapon, and we have the military rushing towards the area. Splitting up now will force them to divide their soldiers in a panic. And now we have the element of surprise, so we might stand a chance! This might be the only chance we get. Nadine, this is the most decisive I've ever seen you. And I must say, I'm thoroughly impressed. You know what, Lex? I'll take the compliment. Thanks. Well, that's quite refreshing. Uh, thank you as well. By now we were all looking at Professor Doherty, whose arms were folded thoughtfully. Oh, Nadine, Nicholas, it seems like just yesterday you two were entering my classroom for the first time. Eager children with stars in your eyes, you've had to grow up so fast. I truly can see your mother so clearly in both of you. <clears throat> Everyone, listen up. The plan commences now. Gather your belongings as quickly as possible, and let the adults back at the house know they need to get moving as well. I'm the fastest. I can do it. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Since you are likely to be heading into the center of military forces, please take Kai with you as well. Hey, me, Ing, and Cedar were supposed to go after Lily Green. What should we do now that we got her fragment early? We've located Jonathan Hale at the site of some ruins in the Winter Realm. I'll give you the coordinates and you see if we can intercept him. At the very least, you could stop him from joining the others. Oh, hell yeah. I was hoping I'd get a chance to clobber him. Let me in on that action. I've got a score to settle. I'll make sure Fair comes with us so we have a chance against the Winter Beast powers. Hey, what about Talia? Uh, where is the young Miss Wick, exactly? Still training in the Night Realm. Daisy, I can run to get her after I tell everyone at the house. It'll be a detour and I'll need to fly the barrier, but I can do it. You know... After all this time, I'm starting to realize that Talia does pretty well on her own. And she can cross the barriers without having to fly over them. I think all we need to do is let her know what's happening. She'll figure it out from there. All right. I trust her. And you. I'll tell Fortuna to communicate telepathically with Jinx. Let her know the base has been compromised. Thank you, Mercury. I know we'll see her again soon. I have faith. Yeah. Me too. All right, then. If that's every order of business, Miss Daisy Demeter, hold the fragment high. Daisy and Professor Doherty held the matching necklaces above their heads. They glinted in the morning sun. Feel the power of spring coursing from the fragment of the realm crystal into you. Hang on to it even after we drop the barrier. It has the potential to strengthen the spring fairy that holds it. As a combatant, and a potent healer. I think you will be an excellent choice. I accept the responsibility. Thanks, Professor. Of course. Now, feel the desire and connection through your heart and body, and drop the barrier! Their fragments glowed green and white. A shimmer flashed over the whole realm. Though the barriers around the adjacent night and summer realms were still up, we watched the barriers of spring fall before our eyes. All fairies, fight hard and live! Our mission begins now! What do you mean Representative Lancaster lost her fragment? Her carelessness was the reason the barriers began to drop? That's what she told me when she came flying to my estate. Apparently, she was ambushed by some of the young fugitives. The savages. I have had enough trouble keeping the six realms in line, sending my soldiers to all your domains. And now I need to chase down these teenagers? Personally, I believe this wouldn't be a problem if the other realms were allowed to have their own militaries. No. The Day Realm needs to hold that power. Those are the rules established long ago. Typical General Avalon. 
So stubborn, yet full of complaints. Hold that tongue or I will find a way to put you in a prison cell. Enough. We don't have time for petty bickering. Ah, oh, it's the time of the meeting when Cassius Wick graces us with his lovely voice. Had enough of your thinking time? We know their goal. They want the fragments of the realm crystals to continue dropping the barriers. Those barriers are our hold on the six realms. We cannot lose them. But we know exactly where they will strike. At the four of us. Error! At your command, Sovereign Wick. Where is Jonathan? I want him with Representative Von Brass. I don't know where he is, my lord. Explain. He vanished a few days ago. We can't find him anywhere. Do we think the rebels got him? No. Even with the day and summer beasts on their side, none of them could hope to stand up to Jonathan. Stupid boy must have left on his own. Pardon my frankness, but <laughs> isn't that a strike against you, Cassius? He is one of your underlings, after all. We have had enough trouble keeping the citizens in line since the test. Dozens of fairies never returned to their families. Our explanations have not been enough. Chaos is stirring in our domains. If the barriers continue to fall, our rule is over. What else did we expect, really? If our dear sovereign can't keep an underling in line, how did we expect him to keep the realms under control? <laughs> oh my. Of all the people to break fine glassware in frustration, I didn't think it would be you, sweet Cassius. That boy has the powers of winter and wandered off! We don't have time to find Jonathan. All of you, crush the fairies that make their way to your fragments. Take their jewels if you can and get them to me. They've no doubt been using this time to grow stronger, and their jewels should reflect that. Era, you stay with me. Yes, sir. My fellow members of the Fairy Council, remember everything that could await you on the other side of our glorious ends. An eternal life to accompany your eternal rule. Sweet music to my ears. We won't fail, Sovereign Wick. You'd better hold true to your word, Cassius. Fear not, General. I give my word on this crown that these realms shall belong to us fairies forever. The forests of spring kept Vander Gray, Verdon and Alpine Demeter, and myself hidden. When we found a creek near the barrier to the night realm, I knelt beside it. With my powers of surveillance, the creek turned bright blue and flashed with all the images of our compatriots I could discover as I used my jewel to peer through the snow, ice, and rain across the six realms. Looking through a glacier in the Winter Realm, I could see Ingrid Colt, Florence Glace, and Cedar Rose huddled in warm clothing as they trudged through the snow. From a desert oasis, I could see three deer made of fire carrying Lex Golden Ray, Nadine Christel, and Nicholas Christel across the summer desert. Daisy Demeter, Rondell Stone, and Lyndon Breeze moved quickly through a forest of autumn as rain fell. Then there were the figures of Talia and Violet Wick huddled together next to a creek. The night beast tucked herself near Talia's side. And atop the dragon Fortuna, I saw Kai, Hazel Lucent, Gardenia Vale, and Mercury Chase. Two swords of light flashed in the boy's hands as he stood on the dragon's head, staring down an army of the Day Realm. I am a man of science, logic, and the world I can observe, even when it comes to magic. Yet, as I knelt by the creek, alight with images of my students, I offered these young fairies a prayer. The Realm Tree was created by Jumar Thompson and Julian Hermano and is performed by voice artists all over the world. To show your support, please visit therealmtree.com and follow our socials. Thank you for listening. And tune in next time for episode 26, Under a Golden Sun.